Hello everyone, this is Hillary with Dominion Tea, and today we're going to talk about the history of tea in India. So why India? India is the second largest producer of tea. In any given year, India will produce about 1.4 million tons of tea. That is the equivalent of 400 billion cups, so it's a lot of tea. India is home to 1.4 billion people, of which 8 million work in the tea industry. Those 8 million people are mainly from the ethnic minority tribes of India that contribute to the amazing uh, diversity of dialects spoken on the Indian continent. UNICEF estimates that there's over 1,700 different dialects spoken in India, which, uh, if you are not a native speaker of one of its four main languages, complicates your capability uh, to travel through the country. And communicate with the population. So how did tea get into India? The Indian and Chinese tea boards have worked together over the years to map the DNA and history of tea as it migrated out of northern China and Mongolia down into southern China and into India. It is believed it actually made it into India via animal uh, or either through the rivers uh, and possibly as man migrated over the continent thousands of years before the British showed up. Uh, it is also documented in some of the first trips of Chinese headed out uh, of China to explore into the Middle East that they traveled uh, with tea plants and discussions of their culture. And so it's, it is very possible that it was shared also in the fifth century. So well before the 1700s. So when the British showed up, tea was not a new thing to India. What was new, however, was the idea of producing it commercially. And so the British showed up with uh, plants and seeds from China, planted them, and they failed. And it took them another 30 years to identify the native tea of India. It's called the Assamica variety. It is a larger leaf tea plant. It is very tolerant of the warmer and wetter climate of India, as well as being grown at lower elevations. And so it is this plant that the British East India Company spread throughout the country. So let's see how, what they did. What you have here are the growing regions of India in the current time, and they are not that different from what the British East India Company set up in the late 1700s and early 1800s. We're going to touch on three of these regions. So starting in the south, uh, we're going to talk about Nilgiri. So Nilgiri is a Sanskrit word meaning blue mountain. So much like the Blue Ridges here in Virginia, India has its own mountain range that looks blue from a distance when it is home to some beautiful teas. The West Bengal region is home to Darjeeling, one of the most famous teas on the planet. And then there's the Assam region, which many of us uh, have drunk over the years without even realizing. So it was one of the original uh, growing regions for uh, Bigelow, Tetley, and your major British uh, tea producers. So let's talk about these teas. So starting in Darjeeling, Darjeeling is kind of a unique region of India. It is at the foothills of the Himalayan mountains. It is the one place where the Chinese tea plant actually can grow because of the elevation there. And since it is high elevation, it does have a dormant period, unlike the other growing regions in India. So in Darjeeling, the first harvest usually happens in about April, and that is the first flush. And that is the lighter of the two teas you see here. Uh, this first flush is going to have some very green characteristics. So if you are a green tea drinker, this is a great one to explore uh, because it is going to be vegetal. It's still going to be a little floral, like what is expected from a Darjeeling, and it will carry the signature Darjeeling astringency. The second flush is harvested in June, and that is the darker Darjeeling, and that is the Darjeeling the world has come to love. This tea is so famous, it is the first tea on the planet to get a geographic identifier from the United Nations. What does that mean? That means that nobody else gets to call it Darjeeling. So much like sparkling wine here in the United States cannot be called champagne, uh, Darjeeling grown anywhere or produced anywhere outside of the Darjeeling region may not be called Darjeeling. And so this tea is considered kind of the champagne of teas. It is floral, fruity, woody, uh, and has a, a stringent, or we'll say dry, finish. 
Uh, so this is a great tea to explore if you haven't had it before. And again, if you're a green tea drinker, pick up that first flush. It's a great way to experiment. Uh, next is Assam. Assam is grown to lower ele elevation. And this is the Assamica variety. And you can see it is a darker red versus that Darjeeling, which is a little bit more of a brownish orange. Now, this plant actually grows year round and the Assam region can harvest year round. So how do you tell a difference in the harvest? Generally speaking, the better quality loose leaf tea from Assam is produced in late fall going into what would be winter. Now keep in mind, winter's not all that cold in the Assam region because this is tropical. So, but they will get a more complex flavor uh, from those harvests done in um, winter and going into early spring in the song. And so those complex flavors run the, the gamut of woody from pine to cedar based off of how the tea is dried. Uh, it can also have a very um, smooth mouthfeel, but it again, it has this character astringency of India. This is your uh, stereotypical British tea. This is the tea that gets milked and sugared because of its strong flavor. Uh, it can carry those and you can still taste the tea, but take the time not to drink it with the milk and sugar so you can appreciate uh, the other flavors that the drink provides. And last but not least is the region of Nilgiri. So this is southern India. Uh, for those of you who uh, remember Sir Thomas Lipton uh, and are familiar with his story, he started in the Nilgiri region and then moved into Sri Lanka after the coffee industry uh, got wiped out there from rust and uh, subsequently put his plantations into Sri Lanka. But Nilgiri is home to a unique black tea that brews crystal clear iced and its oxidation is slower than the Assam or the Darjeeling, meaning it will not cloud as fast. So it is used a lot for iced tea. Uh, this black tea has a beautiful floral finish as well as that woody. So it's softer than the Assam, but it is still strong enough to carry milk and sugar. So we hope you enjoyed this uh, walk through a little bit of history of India and these teas, and we encourage you to go out and explore more. And if you've got any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel.